This program was brought to you by Penny Mac TPO. Visit tpo.pennymac.com to learn more about becoming a partner and starting your journey to greatness. With the people, products, and technology to take you there, it's why they say, at Penny Mac, greatness lives here. Welcome to The Interest. I'm Christine Stewart, and boy, am I glad I own a home. Things are tough out there for first-time buyers, as evidenced by Black Knight's monthly monitoring report. Home price growth through April continued. It was the third consecutive month that every one of the nation's top 100 markets saw double-digit annual appreciation. Now, the report did see some very modest signs of cooling, which could be an indicator of a broader slowdown driven by sharply rising 30-year rates. About that cooling, it's a matter of perspective. Home prices were up 19.9% year-to-year in April, just slightly below the record of 20.4% in March. Despite the slowing, prices still rose 2.2% for the month, the seventh month of the pandemic era where prices have risen by more than 2% in a single month. Last week, Selma Hap of CoreLogic told us she expected home appreciation to drop to 5% by the end of the year. The average home has now gained 8.7% in value since the start of the year. There's still a supply problem. The continued lack of supply continues to weigh on home sales and keep prices higher than they might otherwise have, have been given current affordability metrics. May was the worst housing market for home buyers in 16 years. If you own a home, things are good. Mortgage holders had $2.8 trillion more in tappable equity in April than they did at the same time last year more than two times the levels of the previous peak in 2006, and perhaps, obviously, yet another record high. This is all well and good for current homeowners, but it's making for an increasingly challenging environment for home buyers. The monthly P&I payment on the average home bought with 20% down is nearly $600, or 44% more than it was at the start of the year, and 865, or 79% more than before the pandemic. In other news, a second round of layoffs has taken place at Mr. Cooper Group. Last week, the company laid off 420 employees. Mr. Cooper officials said in a statement that the mortgage industry is facing an environment of rapidly increasing interest rates and rising inflations, which has resulted in decreased origination volumes. And finally, Redfin is reporting that the median sale price of U.S. homes with high fire risk was $550,500 in April. That's $119,000 more than the typical home with low fire risk. Fire-prone homes have historically fetched higher prices, likely because they tend to be larger and located in pricey West Coast metros. But the price premium for high-risk homes has surged during the pandemic. That's in part because scores of Americans moved out of cities and into suburbs and rural areas, where homes are more likely to face fire risk due to the proximity of vegetation. This program was brought to you by PennyMac TPO. Visit tpo.pennymac.com to learn more about becoming a partner and starting your journey to greatness. For more on these and all of today's top stories, visit mortgagenewsnetwork.com.